mission. They see me trolling. They hate him. Guys, this is what you do when you can't buy a strike. We have had an amazing month, right, Luke? I mean, probably one of the better months. And we kind of took it for granted. We, we did not have a very good game plan. In fact, we got in the boat. We're like, what are you thinking? We're like, neither of us knew. And because we did no pre-trip planning, which is the opposite of what we teach, we could not. We actually caught one ladyfish. But it was brutal. We, what did we want from plan A to B? Yeah, we tried four different C. things. Usually all of them work. And uh, that's the biggest lizard fish I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. At this point, we're not even getting picky. That is a monster. I thought that was a trout. That is crazy how big that lizard fish is. Don't let that cormorant get it. But yeah. there are times when we said, all right, we're going to film something. And this is real life. This is just tough. Man, look at this it's size. A, it's a this big lizard, lizard fish. Lizard whoa, 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 hey. Whoa. Out of the get boat. thing out of here real fast. We're just nothing else is biting. And we and did a podcast on this. So this is this is basically what you do to go out and have some guaranteed action, right? With as little effort as possible. We're just trolling the edge of the channel. Trolling right the, the grass flat comes up the channel. We're just trolling right up the edge of it with paddle tails, slam shadies on quarter ounce jig heads. And, uh, and whatever's there is gonna eat, right? It has a little, oh, oh I just had a hit. That's got thumped pretty good. But this is, uh, this is where you can catch a little bit of everything. You have the roamers, like the Spanish mackerel, the ladyfish, the jacks. And then you also have the ambush feeders too, like the sea trout and, and even sometimes, you know, redfish if you're in snook, if you're up close to, uh, to more structure. Um, also grouper, right? Flounder, like uh, all sorts of stuff. Even some roamers like, uh, like cobia on, on occasion will come up and eat. So great way just to go out and, and just cover water without much effort. Literally make one cast and then just let the boat do the work. And it's shocking how many fish you can catch, even though we're in four feet of water. And, right? the, and the boat will set the hook for you. You yep. don't have to do that much. And yeah. this is a time, depending on the time of day, and depending on how old you are, obviously, you need to be legal to do this, but you could sit here and, and have a brewski, or the, not the driver, we don't encourage that, but like me, I could be sitting here and having a beer if it was late in the afternoon. Let's rewind and talk about what happened. Let's talk about the tides. The first couple spots we tried as we continue to troll this little flat here. Uh, what so, happened is life, right? I mean, not every day is going to be amazing. And uh, I had an awesome trip last night. I pulled up to a spot I haven't been to in about a year and uh, caught overslot red and there's a whole school with it. And so I was like, okay, easy. We're just going to go back there and catch some redfish. That didn't work out. You know, we get there and I uh, had a couple, we had a couple of fish strike, nothing very big. And then, okay, let's try some docks. And, and that didn't work. Usually that's the, the <laughs> foolproof thing, uh, at least for me around here lately. And so that wasn't working. And then I tried my favorite docks, literally not even a strike that, there. That, in, in our fairness, did get hit really hard by the red tide. Not that yeah, long, that like it hasn't help. recovered yet. That didn't help, but, uh, but it still should have been some fish caught. And so now, um, and now, okay, game plan, right? Okay, let's just go just the easy route to catch something. And that is just to go out here and troll the flats. We just have uh, only 30 more minutes till we go in. Um, did not want to get skunked. And so this is the foolproof way to do that. <laughs> so that's really it. I just thought we'd just do a quick quick little podcast. And we're just here that. on a flat right near you can get shore right behind us and a few feet deep, little grass, yeah, some birds. And what you want to find is some sort of bottom structure. Could be anything, right? If you're not in an area with a bunch of seagrass, then look for oysters, shells, just anything other than flat sand. And so the edge of the channels is a, is a safe bet. And so the edge of the channels around here mostly has seagrass going up to it. Um, but if you're in like a marsh system, then the edge of the channels will probably have some, some sort of rocks. You want all that current flow, it's gonna, it's gonna pull out something. And, uh, and then here too, we just kind of have like scattered around grass. So we're just trolling right over it, five feet of water. And if we get into a spot that has a lot of fish, um, then we can just drift through it and, and catch even more of them. But the, this trolling is, is again, surprisingly effective. Even on slow days when the bite's terrible. And so what was the tide doing this morning? It's just going out. It's a, it was like a medium tide on its way out. Um, and we're like five days after the full moon. And so the moon was shining. I was walking 
walking the Lotus in the morning, the, the sun was shining pretty, or the moon was shining pretty bright, which definitely didn't help the daytime bite, but, uh, but it still shouldn't have been as bad as it was. It was just one of those days where the fish didn't want to cooperate. Even in the canal on the way out, we we saw some schooling fish. I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy. And, and they, weren't, they weren't even hidden. They were, oh, they, were dialed, another, they were just dialed in on oh. really small bait fish. Oh, fall it again. Yeah, the, the coolest thing about this is just take kids out doing it, right? Take a young kid who's just strong enough. All they have to do is just hold on to the rod. Watch and they can bird. get, they can, oh, dang, I just got thumped. Might have yeah, been I think the bird. bird hit your line. But, um, they can feel the sensation of the strike, right? They feel like they caught it and you can just cast for them, cast once and just let it troll and just watch the rod tip. So we use the, the cool thing about these paddle tails is that the, the rod tip, you know if you have weeds on it or not, if that rod tip is is not doing the little small thumps. If you look, I don't know if you can see on the, on the uh, camera or not, but that rod tip is just doing a real small, you can see that the space of the paddle tail just doing its, doing its thing down there. And if there's weeds on it, it's going to basically block the paddle tail and it's just going to be uh, just a dead a dead stick. Uh, obviously, you can look at the bend of the rod too. If there's a lot of weeds, it'll it'll show. Every once in a while, kind of clear it off, do some jerks, and then otherwise just let it go. Now, and again, this doing this before the red tide, we would have hammered the trout. Um, I haven't tried this since the red tide came through. I know a lot of fish are starting to move back in, but uh, definitely not what it was before. But even still, right, you have some action. We've been doing it for 10 minutes or whatever, caught one fish and and then missed several others. So that's really it. Just wanted to highlight the easy fishing game plan on going out and catching some fish. This is what to do when all else fails. And, and sometimes you'll find some new honey holes. We found some great spots just doing this that uh, we had passed over previously. Uh, side note, a lot, oh, a lot of people have uh, have been asking and sent me message. They posted that 20 foot boat with trip 300s, Mercury's, 900 horsepower on a 20 foot boat. And people are like, oh, that, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why would you do that? You can't fish out of that. Dangerous. All kinds of just crazy comments. But here's what happened. Oh, another hit there. And I'm getting a bunch of little strikes. Uh, that was in Winter Haven, Florida, where Luke and I grew up. And this uh, guy, Tony, and his wife, famous water skiers there, Cypress Gardens. Oh, man, I'm getting a bunch of little small thumps. Uh, they wanted to set some world records where they were going to be pulling anywhere from 30 to like 70 different people. <laughs> oh, man, something is just messing that's, with me. That's probably ladyfish. Ladyfish will do the little slashing. They'll go there and there slash around. There it is. It's on. All and right, so they're breaking see. a world record and you can imagine the type of horsepower and really, oh yeah, it is a big old lady fish. The type of, uh, the type of power, just raw power that you need to get. Keep, keep it right up so we don't get tangled on real money. To are. get 30, 40, 50 people all up on water skis at the same time. So the irony is, even though that's a ton of horsepower, I didn't get to see the props, but I'm guessing there are like 16 inch props. Uh, and it's, it probably can't even go that fast. It's all just pure power to get them going. And it was cool. They broke quite a few records. I, I believe it might've been 10 or so world records. Man, we're getting some big junk fish. Look at the size of this lady fish. Holy smokes. Oh, that is good cut bait right there, kids. So normally, if you know you had the rest of the day to fish, you might save this. Yeah, well, he looks like he's hooked deep. We'll, we'll go, I'll save him for, for some crab traps. Look at the size that's of that lady fish. lady fish. Whoa, hey there, Baba Booey. It's like catching a little tarpon. Son of a gun. Yeah, that thing inhaled it. Uh, we'll be able to save it still. Give me my jig head back. You want to keep this, Luke, you said? Yeah, we'll keep him. Watch if he's hooked deep, it looks like he is. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, it was really cool to, to be out there and see all that, all this world record stuff. And uh, yeah, I was, I was blown away when I pulled up and saw that 20 foot boat. Where do you want it, Luke? In the live well. Back live well? Yep. With trip 300s. 
absolutely not. So now you guys know that uh, you know the some of those skiers weren't that surprised. They were like, oh, this is just normal. It's just what you do when you're trying to break a record. That finally got destroyed after I was actually catching a couple bass on beautiful Lake Eloise. Oh, I got, I got slimed. Ugh, ladyfish, nasty. Um, anywho, I digress. Uh, that was a that was a fun little thing to see. And why, Luke? What were you doing? Camping or something this weekend? First camping? Yeah, there's some camping up in Ocala. How'd it go? It was fun. Yeah, the weather was. The weather's finally getting cool enough to, to have some good camping, so it was a blast. First trip I've had in a while where I didn't bring up a single fishing rod. Really? Yeah. But weird, packing without the fishing gear. So right now you see that we've done a lot of, uh, basically did a big circle. There's a bigger flat here with some potholes and really wasn't much there. So I'm gonna head back over to this other channel and then go with the current. Earlier I was kind of going cross current. Um, now we're gonna go in, a, in the main channel with the current. And let's see, uh, let's see if we can get some, some action, some bigger fish. The trout have to be around here somewhere. There's no way they're all gone. But, uh, but yeah, this works shockingly well for even trout. Like I've caught, I've caught multiple trout, you know, over 20 inches doing this. And it's, uh, it's just shockingly easy. One of those things I didn't really believe it. I've heard people doing it. And then I didn't really believe it until I was just in the idle zone. We we're actually over in uh, Fort DeSoto, not too far from here. And, um, in the idle zone and decided oh, I might as well just drag lure and yeah Joe was Joe was with me and we we started catching just trout after trout and then ladyfish trout bluefish Spanish mackerel it was just like oh my gosh this is shockingly easy so even on terrible bite days like we're on right now when nothing's working come out troll some paddle tails on the edge of the channel Ooh, here's you're gonna nice... catch something might not be a trophy yeah, great, great for kids and, and and people who just don't fish a lot, right? I mean, that ladyfish, especially when we're moving, it hit like a brick. I mean, it, it's a, it is a lot of, I mean, that first couple of seconds, there was some drag pulling out on a stinking lady, it was a big ladyfish. But when you have the engine propelling you forward and that thing try to push away from you, it hits hard. And there's a lot of people like, Newer people that catch their first ladyfish, they think it's the coolest thing ever. And uh, heck, they probably think it's a tarpon. Jumping all over the place. Yeah, and you, and you don't have to have like anything fancy. You don't have to have a trolling motor if you're in the Freedom Boat Club or something like that. That's a great point. You can uh, you can just go, all you need is a motor. It really, a lot of kayakers do it too. We have a lot of members, like Dave Oddie's uh, came, down, whoop, came down here in a kayak and he, in one day after one of our meetups, he caught, it was like five or six snook. Five or six snook just trolling paddle tails from his kayak. So the, the inshore trolling is something that just doesn't get as much notoriety as it deserves because it, it really does work and it, it seems to get better and better in the uh, really throughout the years. But I like the winter time best because a lot of times those fish will, will hang toward the edge of the channels once the cold front starts coming through. So now's the time to uh, just to prepare for it and just be ready for it. On a, on a crummy day, just don't forget about the elusive inshore trolling yep especially for you freedom boat club owners members i guess is the right term because that's a question we get all the time and we have a lot of people who watch that have joined you know because it boating right now is at all-time highs which means the cost to do anything to even store your boat are absolutely crazy so a lot of people have joined these these boating clubs and uh, I mean, it's a great way you save money. And you know, the bad news is, you know, you have to plan are. a whole, oh, Luke's on further in advance, but Let's we get that question all the time is, all right, you know, I've got a Freedom Boat Club, but I don't have a troll motor. Don't some, you know, all of the come with it, just an old school anchor. That's a great, oh, I'm getting some hits too. There, oh, great way to just go out there and get some tight line. What do you got, a lady? Can't tell what this is. I just had a nice set. I think it might be a little skipjack. What in tarnation? You foul hook it? Yeah. <laughs> foul hook. So you be careful with these guys. Yeah. These guys will light you up. These little two little spines down here are bad news. So do not, do not grab them like most people do. They will totally light you up. So I'm gonna <laughs> get the old D hooker out for this bad boy. Let me get a little pick of that one, Luke. I don't think we have a. 
Pick of that bad boy. Let's make it snappy. I'll make it snappy, snappy. There you go. All I'm right, a little quick D hook. If you ever use these D hookers, you basically just get it, the, the loop of in there, shake them right off. Good to go. Nice. All right, let's uh, want to go a little bit shallower. I'm almost saying we got to head on in pretty soon. Oh, we got to do one more little round. We got a conference call we got to make. This is what I've never been on a conference call with. It's like, man, it sounds like you guys are outside. Yeah, it's too windy to, to pull that off. <laughs> maybe we are, and maybe we are. <laughs> oh, I had a little uh, weeds on there. Son of a gun. Uh, really, I want to catch a trout. Oh man, there's a tarpon right there. Seriously? That's a big tarpon. Right there. Yeah, so this is this is why you fish the edge of the channels. You got the roamers, you got a little bit of everything. That was like a, it was like an 80 pound tarpon. Wouldn't mind hooking it in him. So, oh. never know what you're gonna catch out here. Yeah, I just looked down, I thought it was a log, and then all of a sudden I see him moving. It was literally just right here, and then it just did a little turn and went, went away. Can you imagine? The hit on that. Yeah, we've been in big trouble. Why we were, uh, why we were moving? Look at all this, look at all this foam here. That's not good. Yeah, it's foam and some uh, seagrass. Go back that way. Oh yeah. Um, I got a new paddle tail. Lou, we're going to be coming out with as well. Kind of exciting. Kind of a, a do it, uh, do it all in the four inch range. And it's our own mold. You won't be able to find it anywhere else. Obviously, we'll have it in, starting in the Slam Shady color and probably a couple others. It's um, pretty neat. We even have a cool little thing on top to help you rig it. That's all I can say. Right, Luke? It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, we're just we're still in the early phase of testing. It'll be a while. Um, we just want to make sure that we're just tweaking it so to have the rigging as easy as possible, the action in the water when rigged on both weighted hooks and jig heads, right? So they can do both the shallow water and the deeper water. Unfortunately, a lot of a lot of soft plastics, you can't really do it all. So that's what we're trying to do. Just one one stop shop for a, for a good paddle tail. And it'll come pre scented, although we recommend putting Dr. Juice on there. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. It, and we'll do a whole podcast as well on the making of your own lure. It's uh, when, when I mean, it's not that hard it's to do a little 3D print and, you know, do a one-off to have like a, a single shot injection mold, but we're doing like the big boy where you got, what, is it 40, 42? Um, I think it's 40. 40? Yeah, it'll depend on once it's finalized. If we make it any bigger or not, it's gonna decrease. So that's a whole different ball game in terms of getting it right and going through many renditions of, uh, of the, you know, the smaller mold of one, one shot just to make sure it's perfect, because I mean, it's it's a good 15 grand investment to get a mold that size. Adds up pretty quick. All right, so we're pretty much at the end of the rope as far as this channel. So I think we're uh, we're done with this. You know, we gotta go back to work. This trolling, yeah, I did see there's a little point oh, right there here. It is. Oh, nice. Oh, I got a hit right here. Really? So, it could be a trout too. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I'll be surprised that was a trout out there in the grass or in the sand. Can you show my face? The excitement. <laughs> no, it's still good to get tight lines. I'm really hoping for a trout to end uh, in this podcast. Hopefully this one's on a bleeder like his last buddy. Maybe we'll even shake himself off. Let him freak out long enough. Come on. I got you now. Oh. Last thing I want to do is get hooked. Have this thing spit the hook on a, if you're listening, it was a lizard fish. Not the trout I was hoping for. But yeah, this is a, just a great way. Get some tight lines to at least end the day on a decent note. At least come home smelling like fish. <laughs> Instead of going home with your head, head held handsome. <laughs> Great video, by the way, if you guys haven't seen that. Handsome Man Club. Who's Classic. it, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah. Well, you guys gotta watch that. We'll uh, make sure to put a link to it in the show notes. The Handsome Man Club. 
Um, but no, it's a great way to at least go home knowing that you caught some fish and help the confidence for the next trip. And great reminder to always have a game plan and why it's so important to actually do a little pre-trip planning. This, this was one of the first times we just kind of winged it and uh, kind of bit us in the, in the slam shady tail. Polite way of saying it. So anyhow, anything else, Luke? No, what, yeah, what it was real, just, just don't forget about the trolling. It's, uh, it, it's, it's super easy, especially if you have kids, they'll be able to, to just have fun and get some tight lines and, and you don't have to put much thought into it. And this literally took about uh, zero, what do you got, fish? I think I got the bottom. <laughs> yeah, some serious bottom where I got a, uh, yeah, it's bottom. Another lizard fish. Yeah, the other day I had a lizard fish getting caught in the weeds. Yeah, and just uh, as far as jig heads though, just really any jig head works. I like just the trout eye, this is a quarter ounce trout eye jig head uh, with the Slam Shade 2.0. The Texas eye works great as well. It's a little more weedless and you can, that way you can, uh, if the grass is really thick, you can kind of push through it without getting snagged as, as often. But uh, yeah, just super simple, nothing fancy. Just cover water, and then the, and when you get a zone that has a lot of fish, just get up ahead of it and drift down through it, and then you can just cast and catch a lot more of them. So that is the tip of the day, the the bailout of a skunk trip. Yep, the bail. Oh, we got another little little guy following yeah, me up. Right so that's it, edge. guys. Um, make sure to join the Salt Strong Insider Club if you haven't already, and uh, leave us any any other tips that you guys like to use when things are just tough. Obviously, if you had shrimp, you can go up and hit some bridge pilings or something where you just know there's always going to be something sitting down there. But many days, all you got is lures. Got to catch something. You got 30 minutes to do it and uh, get some tight lines. And that's what we did here today. Luke, I already got a hit. I just got hammered out there. Oh, wow. Look at this. And we might have just found a new honey hole. Maybe it was that tarpon right near where that sucker was. That'd be awesome. All right, guys, that's it. We will talk to you on the next episode. We appreciate all the love, all the support. Thank you so much for all you Active Insider members. Really, really big stuff coming here in the near future. Uh, can't share it just yet, but you will know when it happens. We'll, uh, we'll have a couple of big, uh, pretty big launches here over the next, uh, next couple months. So that is it. I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace, we out! Ow!